There are three things that could kill your chapter before it even gets started. We don't matter if it's chapter one, chapter 17, or chapter 217. And if you make these mistakes, you not only potentially really lose your reader, but your plot can also go down the totally wrong path and it can ruin the whole rest of the book. Now, I get it because I wrote 10 books in eight years. I was rejected a lot. And that was because I was making at least one of these three mistakes every single chapter. My plot that I thought was such a great idea, oh, I'm going to have so much fun with this, would just kind of peter out and not deliver the value to the reader. And that's what the reader is really looking for, is some value for their time. But how do you do that and make sure that you do that consistently, chapter after chapter after chapter? Don't worry, because I'm going to tell you in this video. Number one, too much narrative. When you have too much of the character thinking, or even if you're in an omniscient point of view, which is sort of like a drone over the whole scene and how you're describing that. What happens is that the plot that's been chugging along very well like a car on a road comes to a stop because thoughts are not action. Thoughts don't move things forward. Thoughts bring everything to a screeching halt. Now, wait, what if you have some stuff you have to get across to the reader? Every author has information they want to get across on the page. Maybe they want to set up for the bad guy coming, or maybe they want to begin the love story, or maybe they just want to kind of explain who their character is. I get it. Those things are really necessary, but there's a better way to work them in. And that brings me to number two, passive characters. Nothing will make a reader run for the hills and go find another book more than passive characters because nobody really likes those. Passive characters are characters who don't do anything. Like they don't take action in their lives. Everything happens to them. We all have that one friend who's the victim. My boss hates me and my job is terrible and my landlord wants to evict me and my dog isn't even very nice to me. And you're looking at this person thinking, What's the common denominator there? It's you. And if that person does not take action to change their job or pay their rent on time or make a connection with their dog, nothing's going to change. It's the same in a book. Your character has to be active and take action because we respect people that take action. We root for people that take action. We get really invested in them taking a leap and trying to see if they can succeed. Now wait, you're saying, I have a book where a lot of bad things happen to my character and that's what sets off the trouble and gets them going on their path. That's good. You can do that, but you don't want to have that going on for too long. In Ruth Ware's Zero Days, the whole beginning of that book is the character breaking into a building and things are going wrong for her, the things that she did not cause. There's a whole bunch of things that are been done to her and that works. Because when everything goes wrong and her life just gets as bad as it seems it could possibly get at the end of that chapter, she takes new actions going forward. She doesn't just sit there in her house for six weeks drinking wine and watching reruns of Oprah. She goes and does things. And so that's what your character has to do. They have to go and do stuff. And that brings me to number three, which is ho-hum stakes. If the reader doesn't care about things getting worse and the character doesn't care about things getting worse, then they're just not going to keep reading. Rising stakes are really critical in every chapter and every scene. What that means is that things continue to get worse and the stakes, the cost that your character will pay for not having this work out gets higher and higher. And what that does is it makes the reader wonder and worry even more. Every book is a what if scenario. What if Joe has seven kids and he's about to lose his house and become homeless? So let's use the Joe example to tie everything I just said together. Number one, if Joe has seven kids and he's about to lose his house, he's not going to be sitting there thinking a lot. That would prevent too much narrative. Number two, the passive characters, again, he has to act because he's got seven kids with these mouths to feed that are looking at him like, where am I going to sleep tonight, dad? Maybe he's going to rob a bank or start selling drugs or do some other unethical thing. Probably not a good idea, but maybe he will be forced into it. He will take an action to change his situation. And here's the thing, and I talk about this in videos that talk about scene. At the end, things have to get worse for Joe every single time in some way, shape, or form. It can get worse emotionally or it can get worse physically. Let's say we have a scene where Joe goes to the bank and begs for an extension on his mortgage payment and the bank manager turns him down. Boom, things have gotten worse. He has an even tighter deadline than he thought. Or let's say he goes and begs for the extension and great, he gets it, but he comes home and one of his kids has run away from home. And so now he can't go to work. He's got to go find his kid. Boom, things got worse. So the stakes have risen. Things have gotten worse. And the reader's like, oh my gosh, Joe, figure this out. That's what you want with your scene. You watch this video, you heard all the tips and you're like, great, but how do I actually apply this? So first of all, I want you to figure out what actions your character is taking. And I want you to have the character take them earlier rather than having a whole page of the character thinking about taking the action. 
Just let that character take the action. And when they do that, whatever they do in your chapter, at the end of it, I want you to have things get worse. Think about how you could twist this ending so that things don't work out, so that the stakes get higher, so that you're more worried about the character. Don't worry about figuring out how you're going to solve that. That will come later. I believe that our subconscious really drops all the nuggets we need to figure out the plot twists that we create. Just start with creating the twists. And that should not only get the reader more excited about your book, but get you more excited about your book. And if you're struggling to understand how plot works, I highly suggest this video right here because this gives you the basics of plot. And once you have the basics, it's a framework that can take you from beginning to end and really deliver a compelling novel.